Hi there, and welcome to Context Free, where we talk about programming languages. Today, I want to talk about cross-compiling from WebAssembly, or WASM, on Linux over to other platforms such as Windows, creating native executables for wherever you need them. There are a lot of WASM runtimes out there for running WASM code with different levels of support and or different kinds of features. Today, we're going to focus on WASMer, which in its recent 3.0 release adds cross-compilation to its create exe feature. It does this using the fantastic support for cross-compilation that Zig ships built in. Zig is a programming language, but also in its tool chain can compile C and C++ across different architectures and operating systems. So let's look at our example code here. And the language I'm going to use for today is Grain, which has semantics a lot like OCaml and is designed for compiling to and supporting WebAssembly. And this example program here is one that I also used to preface my interview with Oscar Spencer of the Grain language a video that I released earlier this year. And this example program converts HSV or named colors or technically RGB already into RGB colors. We might have a named lookup table for named colors or logic to convert HSV and then switch is appropriate for whatever kinds of colors happen to be in our array, including a possible optional output in case the name is missing. So let's try this out. And we see here that our RGB translated directly, yellow picked up as well, and our rational numbers for this HSV example also translated well, noting that rational numbers are a feature built into grain. And whatever wasn't found, so we see a none here. I might also have used assembly script for this demo. I purposely have stayed away from languages that I already expect to be compiling to native code. But presumably our demo today could work well for anything supporting WASM and some way to access WebAssembly System Interface, or WASI. So having run this program, let's also just compile it to WASM. So we have a compile now. Let's see what it looks like. And here we see that our source is about 1.2K and our output is 470K, which I could shrink using WASM opt if I want to, but this is good enough for now. Let's now use WASMer to create a native Linux executable for the Linux system that I'm on. And we see here that it used the crane lift WASM engine to get the job done. So now we have a native executable called HSV. Let's look at it. Here it's 27 megabytes and we can run it and get the same output as before. WASMer has other kinds of transformations it can do as well. Now I'm not really happy with this 27 megabyte executable. So to get a little bit more feel for what's going on internally, I also have an empty program that does nothing. Let's compile that. and also build this using WASMer. And let's also take a look at the size of the files here, skipping the human readable form, so we can see a little bit closer what's happened. And we see here about 800,000 bytes difference between the empty program and the HSV program, which presumably is whatever came from the native code compilation of the logic in my program and the dependencies pulled in from grain, such as garbage collection and rational number support and whatever else. We can actually look at what's inside of this compiled empty program that's 125 bytes using wasm to watt, which generates WebAssembly text format for us. We can see there's some functions in here, but nothing's really happening, which is what we expect as compared to the lots that might be happening inside of our HSV program and the libraries got bundled into it from grain. Now this is fun and it's great to see compiling on Linux to Linux, but let's do that cross compilation thing. And like I said, for that, Wasmer is going to use Zig on my system path in order to get that job done. So let's take a look at the Zig targets that are supported, specifically those for Windows. And we see here that we have x86-64 among various other options and using GNU for our libc. There are also our Mac OS options, but I haven't tried those out. So let's go ahead back to Wasmer and the HSV version of it. Noticing here also that Wasmer really badly wants this environment variable specified, even though I can calculate it from whichever Wasmer I'm running. Let's go ahead and create a .exe using target x86-64 windows. We see here that it's also found the zig binary on the system path and has passed along that target. Now let's see what we have. 
And here we have our hsv.exe, that's 16 megabytes, for some reason substantially smaller than the Linux version. And I don't know the reason for that. It might be fun to dig in deeper sometime. And presumably it won't run very well here on Linux. Hmm, nope, can't figure it out. Let's zip it up for carrying along somewhere else to some Windows machine. And to do that, let's actually make a release here on GitHub for my grain demo. Let's create a new release. Let's call it HSV demo and make a tag HSV demo, create on publish. And let's give it a file to include. Let's grab our hsv.zip and put it right there. Sweet, uploading. And let's set this as a pre-release and publish it. Okay, here we have our hsv.zip. So let's go over to some Windows computer that we can use to try this out, and for which I'm using Amazon LightCell at the moment. Here I've got a PowerShell window open. Let's download this zip file. which I changed slightly from a previous trial. Here we go, now we've got it. And let's unzip it as well. Very good. Let's see what we have. We have an HSV directory. Let's go in there, see what we got there. And there's our hsv.exe that we expect. Let's try running it. And we get the same output as on Windows, which apparently can run faster the second time. Anyway, this concludes our demo of writing code in Grain, compiling to Wasm, and then cross-compiling that from Linux to Windows to have native binaries wherever we need them, in this case using Wasm and Zig. I hope this has been fun. Maybe we can look at other things like this in the future. If you liked the video, be sure to subscribe. Bye, y'all.